Okay, well, everyone is still taking a last second to read the minutes. Um, just official that we have called to order at 7.08 p.m. I did start the recording for the WebEx. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve the minutes from last one? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, Jill, would anyone like to second that motion? Chris Rogers, thank you. I'll second. All in favor? All right. All passed. Excellent. Thank you. So let's go through. I've got a few things to cover with regards to the chairman's report tonight. Uh, the first one is uh, budget advocacy. So, um, and Helene can cover some of this during um, uh, budget stuff, actually with, with Jan. But um, with regards to the RTM, uh, Helene did present in front of the RTM last week. And before that, I had sent um, 40 individualized emails to each of the board members in advocacy, the same email that we that I had sent to the Board of Finance. Some positive responses. I've not shared those yet. I can pull them up on screen uh, later uh, through this meeting or share them afterwards. But that looked to be pretty decent. Um, and the the vote, I believe, is is it May fifth, clean? Yeah. Okay. So the budget is being voted on May fifth. I believe that we have some decent momentum and we're creating some positive advocacy with both the Board of Finance and RTM. So that's a good thing. Uh, the trustee positions, let's talk a little bit about, so for officers and a new seat that's opening. So the officers need to be voted on every year. And I looked at the minutes from last year, that, was, that took place in the May meeting, not the June meeting. So in May next month, we will be taking a vote for the election of new or continuing the current position. So it would be board chair, secretary, and treasurer. So we need to, as a board, vote on that next meeting for the calendar year of 2021-2022. Okay, uh, there's gonna be a new seat opening with our friend Duncan departing after six years, five years of service, excuse me, is that correct, Duncan? Five years, David, yeah. Five years, that's, that's right, five years of service, uh, which we will sadly uh, miss you. And so we need to begin the process of looking at new candidates. I have a few from the last time that we went through this, and I also welcome any recommendations or referrals that you all may have, because we want to begin that process um, starting now that's going to be very important um i'll work to get an email out with kind of a recap of some of the candidates that we have and i think it could also help if there is anyone that is passionate about leading a committee or we as a board can nominate candidates through email go through that process and then start the process of doing interviews is there anyone that would like to volunteer to help lead that effort I'll certainly be one to help lead that committee effort. If there's anyone else that would like to join me, you are welcome to be part of that process. Jill Brown, you're hired. So Jill and I will lead that process and we will share those findings with you all. Um, Mr. Chairman, as we go out to network and potentially identify new candidates, I recall maybe last year and the year prior, there was a, I almost wanna say job description of the role. Yeah. Andrew, yeah. I don't know if you remember that. You're probably the you know the most recent addition. If they shared uh, that with yeah. you, can we surface that uh, and circulate that to the group? I'll take a look. I mean, that'd be this minute. But if just if someone can take as a to do to try and locate that document and circulate that, that'd be super. Yeah, and plus, we've also got the PSA video that that Joe <laughs> recently. So of course, we've got to leverage that. We we got some marketing assets and a job description. I don't I don't remember getting anything necessarily. Because I remember going through, um, or when I was just at the PSA, I just kind of dug through the guide that we all get, you know, when we become new members, um, new trustees. And I dug through that a little bit, and then I went online to the state, you know, and what they consider about trustees' responsibilities and roles and things. That was really helpful. But I don't remember having a physical thing to look at. I may have something in, in my file, so I'll have to look through uh, my folders and see what I have. But that, that's a good point, Duncan. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, Jill, we wouldn't have had one uh, 
your year. I think yeah, we did have for Andrew. I, I'll I, I'll go through it, and I'll look for my uh, one yeah, of the emails. It's the most descriptive yeah. for me that way. I remember, and then of course you know the town. Mike Tetro's assistant there. Um, she was lovely, but she was very much about you know. This is what you got to do, and look at the link. Okay. Well, let's definitely start that process now. Um, you know, the the end of June is coming up fairly quickly, and I think that it would help if we can work through that committee. Jill, you and I can, uh, you know, set up time. We can talk offline, and then we'll, by the next meeting, we may have some candidates already in process. We'll we'll want to take a vote no later than June on that, if possible. Okay. Um, there's another item in my chairman's report I wanted to add. It's not on the agenda. Um, so I'm going to go through this right now. This is an important item that Colleen Murtha has made the decision to take on a new opportunity and pursue a teaching position outside of her career at the Fieldfield Public Library. So unfortunately, but fortunately for Colleen, she has resigned and her last day will be August 31st. And we wish Helene the very best in her new career and chapter going back to education. It's a Southern State uh, University, is that correct? Yeah, Southern Connecticut. Okay, Southern Connecticut. Um, we're really just, we're so sad because we've really like loved working with you and really creating some great momentum around space planning and everything else in the town. Um, but we certainly understand um, you know, the need to follow dreams and open new chapters. So, you know, we wish you the very best, Helene. We're glad we're going to keep working with you through to August. So thank <laughs> you for that additional time. Uh, so two things that I'd like to, to also introduce, and we can bring some of this up in new business. We are going to need to start a search. Um, we're going to need to talk also new business about um, potentially hiring a search firm. I can cover that new business. And we'll also want to talk about a search committee. Um, again, we can cover that within new business, but I wanted to let everyone know that Helene called me on Friday. She also had a letter dropped off to my house here and has also been in touch with Brenda, um, the first electman. So we all took the news the same way. We're really sad to hear about this news, but we're also, you know, happy and wish you the very best in this next chapter. Thanks. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. Can you tell us a bit about it? About the Are new you role? Teaching? Library? I'm teaching. Yeah. I'm joining the information and library science department. And I'll be heading up the school media. Yeah, terrific. So. Helene, and I'll be teaching comics. That was I'm one sorry? of the schools I looked at, actually. Yeah, they, they, I was one of the schools I applied to and, and considered for my- um, They just got re-accredited, so yes, it's an exciting yes. thing. That's wonderful. They really they really could use you. I think that's a wonderful thing. Thank you very, very much. I'm excited. There's going back to some roots, you're going full circle now. Yes, that's how it goes. <laughs> the older you get, the more you circle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's congratulations, it's Helene. It's very Thank exciting you. for you. Big change. Happy and sad, but we're happy for you. And again, we're really just thrilled for all your terrific support. Uh, and Thank we still have a few months. So we've got more yeah, work we to do. do. We have some work to for, do, guys. We do. Th thanks for thanks for being here through <laughs> August. That's yes. terrific. Um, okay, so that is my chairman's report. Let's move on to old business. We'll start with Colleen for really the next three items. Okay. First one is the COVID-19 update. Okay, so the COVID-19 update. So Maine has continued its hours. It's in Library Express hours in person is still two to four Monday through Saturday, five to seven Tuesday and Thursday evening. Woods, as I said, has added Library Express, Express hours 10 to 12 Monday through Friday, two to four Saturday and Wednesday night, five to seven. And again, there's no seating, it's in and out and computer appointments for the time being. Uh, last week posed a little bit of a challenge. The one custodian we had at Woods was out because he had to isolate because he was, ex someone in his household was exposed to COVID. 
it proved very challenging because we had the custodian coming over from woods and we were running around and we were also being custodians. But anyway, we got through it. But this also uh, silver lining, the town finally approved posting the part time custodian position for Maine. So it got posted Friday. Yes. Yeah. And that way we can start working on adding additional library express hours once we have that extra custodian in because it, it would just would be foolish because we'd be sending people back and forth. Um, we do curbside on the hours that we're not doing library express. And again, we brought back, we brought back some part time staff. Um, and we have, of course, all the full timers working. And it becomes a challenge, like in any workplace, it becomes a challenge when somebody gets exposed or somebody tests positive. But so far, with the in person hours that we have right now, we're able to cover for each other. But I think things are getting better. People are getting vaccinated more. So we're definitely committed to moving ahead. But right now, we can absolutely handle what we have and looking forward to adding more. Uh, pr programming is still going very strong. Virtual programming, we're still doing that. It's going really well. The book clubs are go going really well. Um, staff is working really hard. But again, once this custodian position is in and a little more time goes on, I think we can start moving ahead. Um, Blaine, you. can I ask you about the minutes? Jeez, I'm not used to this. I'm missing Lori. Um, <laughs> so the the custodian, you said, is this the this is for Maine, and this is the full yes. time. Yes, we can do because we had the early years. retirement at Maine. I'm yep. sorry. So yes. As you know, in the budget, we're not hiring another full time. We're going to hire. Also, oh, part time. Okay, you posted for what? Which position? Main part time. Sorry, there's custodian. a delay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, moving on to Woods Elevator renovations. Some very good news. We did finally get. Um, Nancy, what's the right yeah. word for it? The license, the approval? Approval, yeah. The, we passed the inspections and we got the license. And we have the keys. Keys to the kingdom. <laughs> they said it couldn't be done. Um, Outstanding. Congrats. Yeah. Great. Yes. So we're very <laughs> excited. Actually, that just came today. We had a temporary one. Let's, oh, that's right. Oh, that's yeah, you said so on Friday now, it's temporary, so now it's permanent. Yeah, so, so today, so that was hot off the press. So it's very exciting. Um, we just have Nancy. That alarm still goes off right every day at eleven thirty. We're still working on that. There's something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we passed. Not over yet. Yeah, it's it's so close that you can feel it. So um, you can we so can call it lift gate. Yes. Uh, the strategic plan update, we just had our second uh, staff session with Maureen Sullivan, the consultant. Uh, we hammered out the mission statement, so that was really great. The staff did a great job and we discussed vision. We finished the survey. Uh, Jan is putting all the survey information together. I don't know, Jan, do you want to say anything about that now or I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot. But that's what I do. I think you're muted. Sorry. Yeah, I could share now if, if you want. Okay. Um, we, we had uh, three, the 2000 surveys were received, but a lot of them were not good. They were bogus spam kind of things. When I weeded all those out, there were about 1,280 good surveys left. 86% um, were Fairfield residents. 99% of them had library cards. Um, so I think we failed to reach the people who don't use the library. But um, I guess we care more about the people who do the library anyway. Yeah. 61% yeah. uh, of the people were using our online resources. 57% uh, of them consider themselves frequent users, and 93% have used the uh, library's website, which was pretty good. The um, three questions about awareness and the use of our, what services they use and the virtual uh, programs. One of the questions, oh, I'm sorry about my dog. One of the questions was uh, that the library is planning. I'm sorry. 
planning to continue with some virtual programming after after the pandemic, would you continue to use it? And 47% said yes, and 40% said maybe. So it was only 13% who were not interested in uh, virtual programming. So we're happy to be continuing with that. And um, I'll, that's all I'll say for now, but uh, there will be more comprehensive report at some point if you're interested. That's all great info. Stuff barking. <laughs> no um, and the next, yes, eight hundred. Dan has nonsense. Dan's been working hard. Then the next step is, and we started this, is our community conversations. Um, they're kind of like focus groups. Maureen runs them a little bit differently, so there'll be five of them. There is a teen one. There is a community leader one. So that's all elected officials and um, certain departments in the town that we have. And then there's three general public and we had um, over a hundred people say they wanted to be included in a focus wow. group through the survey. So what ha happened is we started sending out invitations. There was also people that had verbally asked to be included. So we sent out invitations and we're now scheduling. There's the sessions are scheduled for the first two weeks in May. They will be virtual and Maureen will be running them uh, with. We have somebody actually a resident that um, has volunteered to help out also to be the second to just help her out while she's you know running the room and there'll be an employee at each one. As a tech, uh, you know, tech support. So those will happen the first two weeks in May. And the invitations are out. So we're starting to hear back from people. I had a quick question, Helene and, and yes. Jan. Um, does Maureen have any kind of suggestions on how we can capture some of those one percenters <laughs> who uh, weren't uh, card holders of the library? In other words, outside of that population, does mm -hmm. she have any ideas on how we can reach those people? The people that the people that answered the survey, or no, because you were because we were saying oh, well, about the people, um, we didn't get people that we were we tried to get people that weren't right. um, library card holders, and the way we right. did that was through all those different. But um, she wasn't surprised. She was very encouraged by how many we got back. She said that was excellent, okay. but That's she was huge. not surprised by the non-user that we didn't have. That's huge. I was just wondering. Yeah, she didn't have a suggestion for that. We had it out there all over the place. Um, it was all around town and it was yeah. on every town organization's um, electronic products. But I think if people saw library service and they're not interested, they just <laughs> don't fill them out. Well, I she said that it's not, it's not unusual. And as I said before, I've been to workshops that say, why are you even trying to get, you know, but yeah. that's, but also part of any strategic plan is to grow your client base. So, of course, right. we're always going to go after people. So it, it's anyway, no, she didn't have anything specific, but I can ask her, I mean, and she'll be I'm back. I mean, she might not feel it's mission critical. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We did get a lot of comments that were like, I didn't know I wasn't aware of that, or I didn't know that you did that and that kind of thing. So uh, hopefully it did build awareness of something or other. <laughs> it, it's true. A lot of people were like, I had no clue that you offered all this. And that was even with the pandemic that people just getting used to using um, digital resources have been like, it's mind blowing, but it's exciting. And then they have the time to do it. So that's been good too. So that's where we are in the strategic strategic plan right now. We're still on target. That's great info. Um, to work, and we're still looking for is the readout by the end of June. Yes. Okay. That's great. Uh, excellent to hear about all of the. Uh, you know, the surveys and the interviews, um, it sounds like it is definitely tracking on um, on schedule. So that's great to hear. And do we know with that readout, is she going to be presenting to us or is it just a report that we review as a board? Um, I think she intends to come back. I, it okay. will, if you great. prefer we just a report, I'm sure she, but. I think she would, you know, I think her intention is to come yeah, we, we would love to hear her narrative on that. You know, I if we could see that report ahead of time, then we should, as a board, read that 
be prepared to come with questions. Have Maureen, you know, provide that narrative. I mean, she's, you know, well spoken. We would love to host her at, you know, the June meeting or the July meeting, whatever makes sense. Okay. Terrific. Uh, anything else on the strategic plan? Are we done with old business, Celine? Yes. From my end, yes. Okay. All right. Any questions, folks, on old business? Okay. Uh, let's move over to space planning. Andrew. <clears throat> yep. Um, yeah. So the the, uh, the biggest thing walked through with Helene last um, in the last month. Did a walkthrough of the of the uh, the main library, kind of talking through the. And did everybody get the? Uh, has every has any, oh jeez. Has everybody taken a look at what Helene sent through earlier with regards to the updated furniture planning stuff? Probably yeah, not. A, um, well, we did. We did get it. It's it's a lot. Can can one of you maybe walk us through, or do you want to talk about it at a high level and maybe review something on screen? So what we what we did, and and we can, I can I can share my screen. Okay. If I can. That would help. What the heck happened? Yeah, we can see your screen. You did it. it. And you guys are all really, really tiny on my other screen. Um, so this is this is just an updated one. We walked through the different areas, um, and Helene will will she and I will need to connect once once more just to kind of talk through where we want to make sure. But I think we actually have it listed out pretty well. Um, is to start to as we go through identify each of these with a phase and we need to figure out what the phasing is probably based on a bit of uh, around cost and with that what we'll we'll do is to take this and now that we have it in excel format is to start to implement it into a planning out for for chris and the team and uh, and everyone so we can see what the spend plan is against everything and then and Obviously, match it in with with woods now, which is we also have, but is significantly smaller uh, need. Helene, any uh, any color you want to throw in on that? Um, well, really, just like Andrew did. So, what we asked the spa space planner to do, we looked at all the furniture, but then we're listing it broken up by different areas. So, as the plan was when we first spoke about this, we'll replace furniture. Around the library, we're not doing it all at once. We're doing it in spaces and phases. So she did all the pricing and we put it in priority order for now. And that's why. So the new book area, if you look at the main, the new book area, that's when you 1st walk in and you go to the right, you know, where the new books are, where those soft chairs used to be. That's that area. The multifunction area is the main um, on the main level. By the reference desk where people sit at tables and do work. So it, it makes sense. I mean, it makes sense to Andrew and I, because we walked around with it, but it's split up in logical spaces so that we do this little by little, but it looks nice every time we do it. Every time we add something, it's like a, a part is completed. Yeah, and that, that way the entire, the entire library is not under. You know, getting changed over at the same time and it is, it is area by area, but we did walk through, um. There's a pretty pretty solid plan here, and we'll just have to plan it out with what the timing will be on each of these, based on an overall cost. So, uh, just a high level question is that what we're looking at right now is is this tab the the estimate for the the full distribution of all the furniture? Yeah, at main, yes. At, at main, yeah. okay. And so th this. It's TBD, whether this would be delivered and paid over a three year, four year, five year period. We don't know that yet. We haven't determined that yet now. Okay. What, what are we doing or what might we be doing to make that determination of what's needed when and how much budget we're going to need each year? Have we, have we discussed a decision making process on that? Or recommendation. Yeah. Well, this was um, going to be what your draw. I, I, yeah, this has to do with your draw. How much you're drawing. 
Okay, so when, Helena, Helena and Andrew, sorry to interrupt. Helena and Andrew, when we met, and I apologize for not having in front of me right now, what was the, we had a certain amount that we, that we budgeted for it, and then there was an overage that you guys were anticipating. Do you recall what that number was offhand? So that, that's different. Yes, that's the space planning. So for bills that are outstanding right now, I had said 12,000 to you at that time. Yeah. With bills that were due. But now we're up to uh, 44,000. And that's mainly because more bills have become due and the RFID system at Woods is in. Right. Okay, so that's 44 plus 37 or? No, that's 44 all in. Oh, all in, okay. okay. For some reason I remember the overage was, I thought it was 60, but I could be wrong. That doesn't include any of this, right, Helene? None of this. Correct. And it doesn't include the it doesn't include the eighty five thousand for the main study rooms either. Okay. Okay. Forty four thousand is RFD RFID at Woods. It's also completing the Woods project. The um. The bills that are for the circulation desk and the reference desk. It's finishing all that. Helene, could you could we could you share your screen and share what you sent to me earlier before this meeting? It just gives that. I have it right to now. be honest, David. I have it on a different computer. I'm in a different. Okay, I, I could share that. But this is um, all. This is all right. stuff that it is available to you <laughs> on the um, your Google, the trustee documents. Yeah, that's great. Um, Andrew, thank you for, for that overview. So that that's just the overall, you know, complete soup to nuts for all the furniture, which is excellent. Um, is has the recommendation been made for this year? That's what I couldn't understand from that spreadsheet. No, it hasn't. It hasn't yet. <clears throat> I think that's that's where we need to. Chris and I probably need to sit and determine what what the best way to look is from from the drawdown and how that relates to what we're the outflows that Helene's talking about right now, uh, as well as, you know, just for the remainder of the year, what what will fall under within the budget, and then okay. what's going to be most impactful. Okay, and I think we have it in in that in the order that Helene was showing, that they, is, or that the the that that is in, in the order that that's in. Really shows the, what we talked about in terms of order of importance, <clears throat> and so. From that perspective, if we can do it, I think we'll we'll kind of start checking them off in order. Okay. But we need to determine in terms of in terms of drawdown. Chris and I will connect on that. Okay. So that makes sense, Andrew. So what I'm showing on screen, Helene, do you want to just walk through? I can't blow this up. Can everyone see this? It's no, these no, are no. the the twenty seven thousand are the expenses that are still due on the um, the woods for the reference desk and the um, circulation desk because we still had we had paid a lot of it but we still have some left the rfid at woods you know you approved that over a year already we thought it was going to be like thirty thousand, but it's seventeen thousand, oh. so that was really good um that ended up being less and we're still and the estimate for the space planning because we ended up adding that project in i'm not including it there when i say 44 chris it's the 27 and the 17. that's what we yeah, actually you're, you're you know what's screwing me up is I had 37 in my mind for the RFID. Okay, so um, that's where you are. Yes. So yeah. you're 100 percent right. That ended up being cheaper. Okay, so that's a good thing. Yeah, well, that, always... that's that's what's kind of screwing up the tally I had in my mind. Okay, um, well that makes sense. All right, and then Helene, so this right now, even though we haven't broken ground, that's just the estimate from the dirt um, contractor. Right, and tomorrow I have a meeting with them. The electrician for the uh, Yankee Electric and also the building department to walk through so that we can get this going that project. Okay, um, I want to come back to that in just a moment. Um, Helene, if we could just hold that thought. So the total that you're looking at right now for this year is that you're, we're in need of. Funds of 129, $749 to support. 
previous bills and the upcoming space planning, but this doesn't include uh, the furniture. Correct. Okay, so there's going to be, you know, even more here. You know, and this this could range. Let's just use a high number of fifty thousand. Is that a good estimate? A general estimate? I don't. I think you might. We'll we'll look at the areas because I I think that at Maine that you may it may have to be seventy five. I if we do an area at Woods also for the first year and then it'll go lower. I I don't we need to look and the only reason I'm suggesting that is I I know one twenty nine seems high, but I just want to we didn't do any drawdown for last year. That's correct. So yeah, but that I don't uh, I don't think that matters. Okay. Just there's a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. So what I would like to see, and I think that we've, we've got the Google Drive set up, it will really be helpful if we can take a look at, you know, the roadmap and the space planning in terms of where all these funds are or where all these costs are and the plan to spend them in terms of one master spreadsheet. Now, I started some of that. We've got a lot of different documents. I think it'd be helpful if we look at just one, you know, core document that's got all of this per year what the estimate is, where the spend is, what our drawdown is, where maybe shortfall is, where we might have extra. I'm happy to make some updates to that. Um, would that help you all? Because I, I don't think that we have that core document right now. No, David, let, let me get with Andrew and, and let's Andrew and I sort out what that yeah. core document's going to be. Because we, at the end of the day, right now, if three of us are working on it. I don't think that's going to get us anywhere. I think but yeah, we Andrew and I sit together and, and and put it together and, and kind of plan it out accordingly. Like I have and, an idea. Some yeah, of them are. We've got a, I've got I just a, want to finalize them. I've got a thought. Is it yeah, also I've got a thought on, on what we can do? And yeah. I'm just cur curious, is it helpful to actually back into whatever your percentage was that you agreed to do every year? Look at that so that you're staying within your plan that the the two percent, whatever it was, of the thirty-six months, the average. I mean, is that still holding? Yeah, right? I mean, look, I, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I. I think you're going to be fine if you look also as that as a guidepost. I don't. Uh, look, that's our budget, guys. Right? We right. voted every year, two percent of the funds, which averages somewhere between seventy-five and eighty-five thousand dollars. That's your budget to keep in with each year. Period. Now we can make a special motion right to draw additional monies out of the endowment to support some of these projects but we need to know what that is and we need to put time bounds on what that budgeted dollar amount is for right i mean so you know whether it's invoices coming due from services that are going to be coming up or past services whatever but we need to time each of those invoices according to what our annual budget is yep well, I agree no, with okay. that Duncan, but you know for this year with some of the the shortfall and some of the additional costs, including like RFID, we are a little bit over. So that's then that's fine. And we should just know that number and make a, a but within the calendar or fiscal year rather for us, you know, get that amount. And then if we all approve, right, make the motion and vote on that additional amount. I think we're all sort of saying the same thing. We just yeah. need it, as I think, as you've said, a single document that lays it out clearly. Correct. Yeah. And I, and I think that that could probably, that would help us make that decision. So do we need to make a vote on that today or do we need to spend more time creating that document, taking a look at the furniture recommendation um, and then making that vote in May for that additional one time draw? But I don't think we have enough information to make that decision. Yeah, we need we need a little bit more a little bit more sharpening okay. of the pencil on that. Um, okay. And I think it's it's been that there are there are several different documents that we probably need to consolidate into one. So I'll take uh, Chris yeah. and I can work more through that now that uh, I think I've figured out where everything lives. And that's that's on me, Helene. I totally forgot about the Google Doc. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So Andrew and Chris, um, you guys yeah, could, I think, could, I could think we're, we're further along yeah. than we think we are. Yeah, I think I think it's it's let us let Chris and I get together on that one and uh, have something for next month. 
Okay, that's great. And and as you all are working on consolidating those documents, if you have, if you want to bounce anything off me, I'll always make time for yep. you know things like that. Anything like any needs you have. Okay. Will do. Um, Helene, I want to go back to the uh, the meeting that you've got set up with Dirt tomorrow in the town. Uh huh. With that meeting, uh, if all detail and information is agreed to, what is the next step from that meeting? Then we move on it because we've already approved the project. Yep. yep. Okay, right. great. All right, so that's the next step before contract. I just want them all together because if, and also approve the project as the dollar amounts that everything has been, that we've agreed to with these estimates. I just need them all in the same room with IT that they don't discover anything wacky. That's the whole. Okay. And with regards to the timing on that, we talked a little bit about this last week. You know, this could start in May. It may not start until June or so. And then the, the project, you know, it may span two or three months. So still a possibility that this could be completed in time for September, October, something like that. I'm hoping. Okay. That that would be my plan, that it would be ready for the fall. So, but I have to see what their plan is. So tomorrow, I think a lot will be revealed tomorrow since they're all in the same room. We're all together in person in the spot. Okay. That's great to see there's progress on that. Um, that's terrific. Okay, um, and Andrew, thank you for your uh, your update on that and working with Chris, appreciate that, and Helene on that. Anything else on space planning? Nope. Okay, great. Let's move on to the operations report. Back to you, Helene. Okay, I already gave the Library Express update. Uh, also, the RFID system is installed at Woods. And now we're working the staff over there. We've brought in some part timers to work on tagging all the materials at Woods because they hadn't been tagged with the RFID encoded so that they're working diligently on that. And that's moving pretty quickly so that they can, instead of having to. Scan barcodes, we're moving everything with RFID. So they're working on that. Um, we're started to plan for well, we were in the midst of planning for summer reading and summer programming. And I had the health department come over and walk some areas and talk to us about what they think we should be doing. Um, like, we want to do more library express hours, but we've programming will be virtual and any in person programming will be outdoors. So that's what we're working on right now. Um, I'm working with recreation and par parks and rec that are giving us some spaces to have. Um, Maybe a few mornings a week to have early morning story time outside with an overhang. So I'm working on that right now. Um, children's we have children's and teens. We have those. We do have big tents. Um, Fairfield library tents. So we're setting them up at woods at different times in the day to do programs. We're also working on doing book clubs, adult book clubs outside. So that's where we're working on that. Uh, the children's room, though, for the summer, if it. Well, they will be open, but it's going to be, there will be no seating in the children's room. There will be no space to play in the children's room. It will be for checking books out and getting materials. And the health department was pretty strict on that. They said we should not be opening any indoor play areas because it will be not good. Because we can't get into the type of contact, contact tracing that we don't want to get into. So we'll still limit people to a half hour. But we will get them back into the areas so that it's easier for them to browse and they can see the whole collection at once. And as the health department says, you want to avoid a total shutdown. You want to be smart and you want to do what you can. So that's what we're at. Um, I, we talked about the survey already and. And we talked about the budget. So those were the RTM meeting and the board of finance. So that's all I had for the operations report. Great. And Helene, uh, do you want to share what uh, the feedback was in the RTM meet, uh, budget meeting? Well, um, I, there's really not much to say. There was questions. I don't know if anybody watched it. The questions were kind of uh, similar 
to the board of finance questions. They did not propose any changes. So right now I'm assuming and hopeful that it will go through as the first select woman put it in that will stay that way. Great. We did talk about that the increases to the part time budget are to cover the increases to uh, that are um, minimum wage increases. That yeah. that's what that's really going to cover. Because okay. and also you know there is a slight we didn't restore what was taken out we are moving back hopefully because the town is very concerned about the budget overall for the town so yeah, that's yeah. What we spoke about okay all right well you know so far so good on you know getting through the those meetings and now you know keeping the faith on the budget uh, vote we'll go from there yes. Great. Terrific. Thank you. All right, let's move on to Jan for finance and budget report. Okay, so uh, everything is pretty normal. We're just moving along and we'll get we'll get that money spent. Um, we definitely need every cent of it knowing what we're going to be faced with next year. Uh, there was also the revolving fund, nothing really significant there, except quite a bit of money did go out for the um, space planning. And the friends continue to support uh, some of our programming. Uh, we're getting ready for summer reading, so there were quite a few uh, expenses for that, if you look at the check detail. And then there was the, the quarterly report, which balanced quite easily this time. <laughs> for a change. <laughs> um, so that's just, uh, you can see that the big category was space planning and um, equipment and furniture as well. So nothing significant. Any questions? Uh, none from my side. I mean, I'll, I'll, it's, it's always well presented. Um, it all sounds good. Here, anything from the board? Nope. Okay. Jan, thank you. Um, let's move to the treasurer's report. Chris Rogers. Um, so everyone, I sent out uh, what we were just started the meeting, the um, essentially what the quarterly update looks like. Again, our performance. Um, Totally due to my stock selection and ability to really dig into portfolio management um, has is done really, really well. <laughs> but um, all kidding aside, uh, again, you know, last quarter was a good quarter for us. Everything's improved. You know, everything continues to go up. I think 1 thing that's important to note is and you start to see some of these changes on that sheet that I, I sent out is on the lower left hand corner. What I'm adding is expected expenses. As we start to firm up what we were all collectively talking about about 15 minutes ago, um, that will give a little bit more clarity as you know next month because we will be able to you know essentially narrow it down. Um, so I think that's really really important to note. Um, beyond that, I don't think there's anything really to report. Um, the Vanguard stuff. We finally got word back from our attorney. We sent it over to Vanguard. Their attorneys more or less accepted all of our changes. So, David, I'm going to be sending some stuff over to you tomorrow that we need to sign and, and hopefully get this thing all wrapped up within the next day or two. Um, okay. It took Vanguard about three weeks to get back to us on our lawyer comments. So, and Chris, with regards to Vanguard and their recommendation on the investments, is that something that we're also going to be reviewing? As a board to take a vote on, or are we letting the custodial setup guide that for us? Um, I don't. To be honest with you, I don't know what we need to do in that case. I mean, recall right now we are more or less fully invested in the S and P five hundred. So mm -hmm. I mean, I can do the calculation, but if you do it, it's you know it's well over ninety five percent. What they're talking about doing is, you know, different normal pairings that you typically would see 65 you know 70 30 80 20 type things i think ultimately as a board what we may need to do is decide how vested into equity we want to be versus 
say fixed income portfolio. Um, and I, I don't know if that's a discussion for the entire board or for a smaller subset, and then we just put our recommendations to the greater board. So I, I, I don't know what's protocol in these types of situations. I don't know what's expected or, you know, how into the minutia the board really wants to get. So, yeah, I, I think, and that's, that's a good everyone. point. That is a good point. Um, I think that, uh, you know, let's complete the, uh, the contract process with them and for, you know, an update on their recommendation. Cause I've seen a few things that you've shared, Chris, I think it'd be helpful to share that information also to the board. So everyone's aware of, you know, this is what their recommendation is with the investment sort of mix. Um, that all look good to me. I'm not in finance or a financial planner, um, but I work with financial planners, so I understand, you know, what their recommendation is. So I think it'd be helpful to share that information with the board. Yeah, and 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 to be honest, you know, last week I was on vacation, so I didn't really get a chance to follow up with um, with the guy from Vanguard. Once we're able to just nail down and 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 dig into it a little bit more, we'll be able to get more detail. You know, him coming back to, I think it was either your email or my email and just throwing out a, we propose a 70, 30 mix. I mean, I'll be honest, my six-year-old can do that. Yeah. Um, so it, there needs to be a little more detail around that. I'm not, yeah. I'm not too impressed with that 70, 30 mix, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I th Chris, thank you for following up with that. I mean, I think that was one, you know, at least in our discussions, as I recall earlier in the year or late last year around choosing the, the, the investment agency. Um, was the fact that they had expertise in this area and could come at us with a recommendation, right? A little bit more than 70, 30. So I'd love to see that and thank you for pushing them. Yeah, and it's obviously it's something that's important for what we're trying to accomplish here. And with the, you know, and, and, and I've put together some iterations depending on what kind of growth we see and what the impact will be with the 2% drawdown and what those drawdowns will look like and some other fees and stuff. Um, I do... After Andrew and I sit down and start putting together like a forward looking budget, I do want to start incorporating some other, uh, a little more detail into what our forward expense structure is going to look like. And that's going to include some of the other costs we typically incur as the board, like development fees or, or other stuff. Um, just because I want to see how it impacts our endowment and how it impacts our growth and you know, what we can realistically budget for on a go forward basis. And I think it'll make it easier as we start to view that space planning project as it, as it gets into its later years. So. Yeah, agreed. I think that that sort of like macro view and then to drill down on the specifics will really, really help us. And, you know, like you're saying, Chris, in terms of that, you know, forward thinking, you know, CapEx versus, you know, what we're spending on fundraising, other efforts in terms of generating, you know, like that those are other discussions. Those are that's long term planning. So um, look forward to that. Before we move on from uh, Vanguard, once the the contract is final with legal and all that, I would like us to set up and if you could coordinate with them is at least a quarterly meeting with them um, so we can get their their input. I'd like to just find out going back to what Duncan said, what's behind the 7030, but really the cadence of that quarterly readout. And right. And, and that was one of the things we negotiated, or yeah. I wouldn't say negotiated, but one of the things that we requested from them Yep. Um, when we did this. And they, they're they aware okay. that that's going to be a, a request from us. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Okay. All right, Chris, thank you. Um, Any questions for, for Chris before we move on? Okay, Chris, thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to the friends. Leanne, we can't see you, but we can hear you. I know, I know. I'm so I'm so happy that I could be here, even if you can't see me. Um, fr the friends are kind of in a holding pattern. We met last month, and we had lots of conversations about what we can do and what we cannot do. Um, so basically, what we can do is support the library financially, um, with the things that Helene has going on, like um, Jan had mentioned earlier, uh, financially, but as far as program, we're in a wait and see. Um, so for the gallery and for um, different events and different programs and the luncheon, um, we're just we're 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 just kind of holding off and uh, and we're having another meeting tomorrow night. So maybe I'll have m more news or more updates, but that's where we are. That's where we are for now. Okay. 
And Leanne, with, with your meetings, they're, they're monthly. You have a schedule of your meetings? Um, we do. We have, um, we have them on the calendar as monthly. We haven't been meeting as regularly, but we're feeling like as things start loosening up and as maybe as we have availability to, to do things that we, um, we're trying to gear up and, and keep the momentum. And we, we still have full attendance and we've been keeping in contact. And um, actually tomorrow morning, we are co-sponsoring a virtual event with the Greenfield Hill Garden Club. So um, they're, they're, we had hoped that we could have done it in person, but again, everything has to shift a little bit. So, um, so that's what we're doing. Okay. Um, I asked about the, the calendar. Um, if it's open, I'd love to, to attend one of the meetings. I haven't, as a trustee or as the chair, attended any of the friends' meetings. So if they're open, I'd love to participate just to listen in. Sure. I'll, I'll add you to the distribution list um, okay. for tomorrow. And if you want to pop on and see what we have to say, um, we don't great. have a whole, whole lot of business. We just have a couple things to update and report on. But yeah, it'd be great okay. for you to be there. Terrific. Okay, thanks. Great. Thank you, Leanne. Any questions of Leanne before we move on to new business? Okay. So for new business, I wanted to introduce going back to the search for a new director. Uh, so I did this afternoon, I reached out to Brad Billy, Bradbury Miller is the firm that we've used a few times in the last few years. Actually, we used them twice since I've been on the board of trustees. Um, the very capable uh, firm that specializes in hiring um, executives for libraries. And I talked with Karen Miller. Um, they are, you know, very familiar with Fairfield, Connecticut, this region. They do national searches. Um, they're, they're a great firm. So there are two things that I wanted to introduce to the board is number one is to take a vote on if we want to on this meeting to invest in hiring a firm like Bradbury Miller. And then number two is to set up a search committee with at least one other member of the board. I'll be one of those that's part of that search committee. Um, now I thought not to just volunteer someone. Um, I haven't worked with you directly, but Christina, would you be open to working with me on that? I'd love to work with you on this. Terrific, you're hired. Thank you. Um, so then the next is, let's have a discussion as a board. Do we want to invest in the consulting services with a firm like Bradbury Miller? Uh, and just to give everyone an idea that their fee is $24,000, it's a pretty standard fee. Uh, that is a, you know, a full uh, soup to nuts fee of their entire process. Their process is really quite good. Um, I talked to them a little bit about uh, or they said the interview process is a little bit different. A lot of it is Zoom. The final candidates can be in person. And I remember the last time that we did it, I think that we flew in two candidates for in-person presentations. Um, now we could consider as a board to do it all virtual. And through this search, it, we could find someone that's right here in Fairfield. It could be someone that's currently working at the library. It could be someone that lives in Oregon. So um, either way, I think that it would be a really good move for us to go through the standard process. So I'll, I'll open up for discussion in terms of the investment of hiring a firm like a Bradbury Miller. Any thoughts or questions about that? I would say yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I think, I mean, that's a significant amount of time. Um, I went through it the last time and um, when we hired Helene and uh, I think I definitely think it was worth working with those folks. So if we go with them or with another firm, I'm in favor of that. I know we have to yeah. go for a vote on it, but it just seems it would be a lot of it would be a lot of time and effort if we all did that ourselves. Yeah. So I think that twenty four thousand dollar investment is worth it. So yeah, I would second that, uh, Christine. I think that's well said. There, um, it is a lot of work. I think as a board. Um, I think we all individually invested a lot of time um, in that process. Um, and so having an outside firm help us with everything from what kind of questions we should be asking to thinking about 
um, you know, our own job description of what the role would be um, and what we were looking in an individual. Um, just that outside perspective um, was very helpful um, through that process. And, you know, look, it just gives us a check and a balance um, in, in, the, in the work that we do. So I think it's definitely something appropriate. Um, my personal view, I only work with them once, David. I, I thought they were a good firm. Um, you know, Helena, I, I you know, put you on the spot as you know, someone on the other side of the table, right? What your experience was um, with them. But um, I think that uh, they seem to be a good firm and seem to bring us a, a reasonably good slate of candidates. Helena, I think you're on mute. Um, Christina, Nancy, or Jan, of course, you can jump in with what you think, but I think I've been involved with them and other searches and I think they're one of the best. So, um, there are others, but I don't know. I I've dealt with others, but I don't know if you want to, I think they're 1 of the best. You've used them before and the, pro you know, you liked how they ran it. I, I don't know if you have to recreate the wheel here. If you have something you like and. I, and they're very, they're very, I mean. They're very respected. Yeah, and it, and it is going to be, it would be time consuming and would draw this process out to search for a search firm. So I think that's something to that's consider. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think yeah. you did that the last time you found that's something right. and they work yep. and it I hasn't agree. changed. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Jan, what was your perspective regarding the staff in terms of, because I know as trustees, I agree with you. We, uh, they were really good group to work with. What did the staff think of um, them as a group? How in, I can't remember how involved yeah, they I, were. I, I think the staff was pleased. They did uh, talk to the staff quite a bit and involve the staff as appropriate. And um, yeah, I find the issues good service. Yeah, and I, I think that it's, you know, there's no time too soon to begin this process. Um, you know, if we, we start this process now, um, if we do take a vote here in a few minutes and we approve to invest in that, I would go back to Karen Miller. She would draw up a written proposal. Um, we could review that through email. We know that we'd have already approved the money, uh, the funds to invest in it, and then she would begin that process and then start working with the staff and then Christina and myself on that process. And looking at the spring that with Helene departing in August, we start this now. If it was someone that was relocating, um, we're going to need that time to ramp up to secure before or by midsummer. So any sort of move would be done, you know, in time for the fall. So that timing could work out. Um, and with I do recall that when we went through this, probably two searches ago, is that the pricing was very competitive. So I'm, I'm not interested in like a competitive bid situation. Bradbury Miller is really competent. I can get everyone the uh, the website link in a moment. Um, any other questions here? Or any other thoughts? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion uh, to retain Bradbury Miller um, as soon as possible to begin our search process. Um, with a limit up to uh, $26,000 plus traditional expenditures. Terrific. Would anyone like to second that motion? Second. All in favor? Terrific. Well, that's great. And here's the link to their um, to the firm, it's got profiles on each of the folks in there. You'll recognize some names like Joe Beth. I know that she was one of the folks that we work with, but I contacted Karen to see who she wanted to assign it to. We'll be working directly with Karen. Um, you know, once we sign the proposal or the contract, there may be some others that work on it like Joe Beth, uh, but it would be a great move. And I think that we'd be well positioned to invest in this as we're looking to find a replacement for Colleen. It's going to be some some big shoes to fill with, you know, your your imprint on Fairfield Public Library. So um, again, we're we're thankful for all of your amazing contribution, and so thanks that you're going to be working with us for a few months. Thank you. Um, okay, great. Um, that was it for the the search and the committee and Bradbury Miller. Any other new business that anyone would like to raise? 
Okay. Well, great meeting. We will adjourn this at 8.09 p.m. We've got a few committees, lots of other work going on um, in between till the next meeting. Mr. Chairman, can I make a motion to adjourn? Oh my God. <laughs> you see, I always like mess up the Robert's rules. Duncan, <laughs> what are we gonna do without you? <laughs> Thank you. Continual meetings, yeah. <laughs> Would someone like to second that motion? Keep me honest here. Andrew, it's Chris, Jill, it's unanimous. We officially will now adjourn at eight, still 09 p.m. Terrific. All right. Have a great week. Happy Good birthday everyone. on Thursday. See you all soon. Thank you all. Bye, all. Bye, Bye, all right. Take care.